Greetings and welcome to another episode of Play on Plug TV. I'm your host, Enrico Nardini, and I'm down here. I'm in my hometown, Pittsburgh. Yo. And I'm here with Paul Drabic, and I'm at the Geekadrome, one of the many really lovely, awesome game stores in our town. Hello, everyone. Yes, today we're going to be talking about dice. What's up with that? Have you seen all the different types, sizes, and price differences between these things? Yep. Paul brought up a really good point. I thought it was just a great episode uh, when you proposed it to us. Paul said, you know, you look at all these gaming dice, and look, man, I, I mean, like, I grew up with D&D second ed, so I'm used to the polyhedrals. You know, we grew up with all these dice, and they're all so different, but then you go into a shop, and you can buy a set of dice for 5 bucks. You can buy a set of dice for 20 25 30 bucks. Yeah. Some get very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, some get from really cheap, about $5 a set, $4 a set, even if you're lucky. And it goes all the way up to, a seen, $20, $25. And it depends upon the manufacturer. It depends upon what's in the dice set, because sometimes you'll get a little bit extra in there. Uh, it, depends, it depends upon the style. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll have some very stylized ones that we'll be talking about, uh, as, well, as well as the different colors. Uh, sometimes they'll have a different process that goes through in the manufacturing of the dice. They'll have frosted look. Uh, they have different color swirls. Mm -hmm. Lots of other stuff going on. So, Paul, you pulled out a selection of dice, different dice uh, varying in both popularity, price, and how they're manufactured. And let's talk about them. Excellent. Uh, what we have here is some jumbo polyhedral dice. And we'll, of course, have close-ups, but let's talk a little bit about these. Now, these you called the dice of overcompensation, which I thought was a good, no, a good name for them. Yes, uh, the dice of overcompensation. Uh, large, oversized dice. People like to bring some attention to themselves, some flair to the gaming table, and just step, uh, step aside from all the other gamers and say, hey, I'm the one hitting hard. Now, my thing about those, Paul, is I'm the one who refers to those as the dice of miniature destruction. Because yeah. as a gamer who likes to use miniatures with his RPGs, these are a terror on the table. Yeah, in fact, if you want to get a nice close-up, they actually become about boulder size for a lot of miniatures. So if you have a particularly soft metal miniature, it'll cause a lot of dance, cause a lot of damage. Yeah. And chip the paint. I'm always like, please get those off my table. <laughs> so... Let, an another thing about dice is, I, I feel, this is just me personally, I feel like the one thing that you really want to have in a die is the ability to read it. And so, <laughs> boom, yeah. yes, that's always the first thing I say for any newbies, is that you want to be able to read your dice. There's a lot of fancy, flashy dice out there. Maybe they'll have glitter in it, some really neon colors that'll look like toxic ooze. But... At the end of the day, you want to be able to read it. You want to make sure that you can get a snap decision, whether you rolled those dice and you got that critical hit so you could jump up, flip the table, whatever you do to uh, celebrate. So um, in it, we, we have two from Q Workshop over here, and I, I, I think the difference is quite stark. Uh, yeah, in fact, you can see the difference here when we get a nice close-up. Uh, these ones here are going to be a lot easier to read. They're also a little bit more manageable price-wise. These ones here, very high detailed, very fancy. Very much says, hey, I invest a lot into my gaming experience, but you're not going to be able to read them as fast, as quickly. Now, uh, like, the price difference in these is stark, and I love these classic Elvish dice because they have that stylized flair, but they also have a very reasonable price, 7 bucks yep. For actually almost exactly double that price, you can get this Q, Q Workshop Celtic dice set. But when I look at it, the first thing I think to myself is, when you roll them on the table from a distance, I, I, as the GM, I, you know, like, I tend to trust my players anyway, but I'm just saying, you need to trust your players. You're not going to be able to tell from, from table distance what that person rolled. Yeah, after the third 20 in a roll, you want to actually be able to see their dice. Exactly. So, but what now? What makes the price so different? Is it just the intricate? Is it just the intricate number work on there? Is that what? Is that what makes it so much more expensive? Uh, yeah, the intricate, uh, the intricate work that does a lot. The color, the process. With something like those Celtic dice, they actually have an additional process called antiquing, where they add the black into it on top of the die that's after it's molded. So it becomes molded, texturized, and then they put the antiquing process on it to make it seem aged. Very interesting, and I, and, and I guess that makes sense. It's just one of those things, it depends on what you're, I guess it depends on the gamer. If you're more, uh, if you're more into flair, those might be a better dice choice for you. If you're more into, th in, into the practicality, the, uh, this kind of utilitarian dice thing where I, I just want to be able to read them, I want everybody to be able to read them, the other option might be, <laughs> or those again. <laughs> you could read those from across the table, 
and uh, they even have different colored sets, so in that way you can tell which die color, which die you're grabbing by the color. Absolutely. So what else have we got here? We've got some crystal cast. I, I think these two crystal cast uh, sets kind of also illustrate one of, the, one of the interesting things. So this is a solid kind of more matte colored die. It's blue. These ones happen to be blue, but they come in many colors. These ones are $4.99. These ones are more, they're like a crystal, like you can see through them, they're, they're, tran, they're translucent, and they're, they're, um, they're like a buck more. Mm -hmm. So is that a material issue? Yeah, that's a material issue, it's a process issue, and the fact that they have to pull out more impurities when it comes to putting these out. Uh, as far as whenever putting these out, you can see that it's a lot more matte. They may not have to check through the quality as much mm -hmm. when they're making these. Uh, when you're putting together a clear product like this, if there is a speck of dust in there, you'll notice it. Makes sense to me. Now, with, the, um, with, with this, though, only a dollar difference. I guess this really does more come down to aesthetics because for most people, a dollar isn't going to break them on dice. Yeah, true. Uh, but it's also a price point where if someone wants to go and have a little bit more pizzazz or even have colors or a style that matches their character's outfit, that's also a really popular decision when it comes to people and choosing dice. Nice. And uh, one of the nice things about these particular sets, these ones are put out by Crystal Cast, and they have little dice bags. Yes, they come with little dice bags. Uh, they do work as uh, for reusable purposes, just not for the long term. If you're going to be using them for about a year or two, you might want to invest in another dice bag. Nice. Awesome. Now, uh, uh, these ones beyond them, the, the Chessex sets, you're, you're speaking my language. This is when I started playing D&D &D so many, so many years ago uh, with Second Ed Dungeons & Dragons. This, you know, th this is very familiar to me, and it really hasn't changed at all. Uh, yes, actually, Chessex is one of my preferred brands that I carry. Uh, I've got a couple different styles up here. Uh, we'll be able to see... Uh so now, what are we talking about price difference there? We're looking at, oh, wow, and it's pretty, once again, there's a pretty dramatic, I mean, not super dramatic, but there's, there is definitely a significant price d d uh, difference. Yeah. So the, the, the most plain solid white, five bucks. Yeah. A little bit more flare. They're clear. Mm -hmm. They're clear. They're frosted. Uh, to me, it almost looks like marshmallows. And that's seven bucks. Mm -hmm. And then... The, these extra special glitter included translucent, that's 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. So now you're starting to, that, that, there we might have a consumer saying, well, you know, mm -hmm. that's where they start to think, is it worth it? You know, like, what, what am I thinking about price point wise? Like, is this worth it? Mm -hmm. um, versus, I think, just like the pure aesthetic thing, like we were looking at with the crystal cast. Uh, yes, this is true. And these, but these dice prices and ranges aren't necessarily the same between different brands. For example, Fantasy Flight also makes a very affordable set of dice, not a very fancy packaging, very beautiful dice, but also very affordable. For what you'd be able to get in normal uh, translucent dice in mm -hmm. other brands, you could get at a Fantasy Flight for a little bit cheaper. Paul, do you find that like companies that, that now Fantasy Flight, is, they, they have a very broad range of products. Mm -hmm. So dice are just one of the things that they make. Do you find that companies like Q Workshop or Kaplow or Chessex that specialize in dice, do they tend to have a higher price point or a lower price point? Or is it do they have a more broad price range where they have lots of stuff that's very affordable but also lots of stuff that's very expensive? Uh, actually, as far as dice goes, from what I found in talking to different companies, Fantasy Flight, Wizards of the Coast included, uh, they put out different dice, but it's more of a necessity than it is their specialty. Mm. So they won't have all the variety that you would have with Chessex, but they do put them out. They put out good quality ones at a good price, but it's more of a necessary evil. Got it. And we had one last uh, we had one last set to talk about. I thought this was interesting because they actually these look completely different from all the rest, and these are from Kaplow. These are almost look like uh, copper metallic dice, but yes. they're not actually metal. No, they're not actually metal, although if you look hard enough, there are companies out there that do put out metal and precious stone gems, mm. but you're going to be looking to pay a lot of money for those. Yeah, I think one company does bone, too, like actual like animal bones or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, everyone's heard different rumors across the spectrum. Uh, someone had bone dice that it turns out to be plastic. But, right. uh, yeah, I've heard of uh, real bone dice. I've heard of, uh, I've actually seen some ones that were made of precious metals and even precious gems. Cool. Awesome. So, mm -hmm. Paul, what's the final verdict? Like, what, what, like for, for you, you know, with all this different dice selection, all these different dice choices, what, what do you prefer? 
myself, I prefer a nice, uh, shiny, easily readable. Uh, as far as brands go, I really like Kaplow. I really like Chessex. Nice. I, you know, that, this is a question, like, I feel like I'm put on the spot. I'm not sure which company I like the best. I, there are so many. I mean, Chessex for me is like, is just, it feels comfortable. It's like, a, it's like an old pair of shoes. And I don't mean that in an insulting way. I mean yeah. it in like a, like, I'm just so used to buying dice from them. But there are so many cool companies to check out. Mm -hmm. um, which, what do you think is doing the most, like, edgy stuff? Than, like, I know it's <laughs> edgy for dice. But what company do you think is doing the most innovative stuff? Like, when I was at Gen Con, Q Workshop seemed mm -hmm. to have, tons of new stuff like they were just cranking out dice types but what what do you like as far as like the newer more stylized dice uh well i'm constantly blown away by um uh, cube workshop a lot of the stuff that they put out uh, as well as chessex uh, which is we've talked about is the comfortable brand the one that we've always seen and if you go into most game shops they'll always have chessex mm. um but Chessex also does custom-made dice as well. So if you contact them directly, you should be able to get custom-made dice. Uh, I've seen that they've even in the past made things as much as random character-generating dice. Mm -hmm. You roll the dice, and it says uh, you know, what the character's race, uh, what their equipment is, what their class is. And if you want to just have something easily made up or for NPCs, it's fantastic. That sounds awesome. All right. Folks, thank you for spending some time with me and Paul Drabic talking about dice down here at the Geekadrome. You can check out more for, uh, for the Geekadrome. Where, where should they go? Oh, uh, we're located 534 Brookline Boulevard. Stop in. We're right across the street from the Snowco. Nice. And on the Internet. Oh, yes. Uh, we have a web page on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash geekadrome. And uh, we're also getting set up for other avenues. Uh, we have Twitter on the way as well as uh, Instagram. Cool. Folks, we're also on the internet. Make sure you check out playonplug.com at www.playonplug.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, all that great social media stuff. Especially if you enjoyed this uh, crazy, like, very deep discussion of dice. Make sure you go down and leave a comment below. We'd love to hear. We, who knows? We might have some dice experts out there on the internet that want to add their two cents to the discussion. And once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.